What's up all my witches and wizards out there? It's Dudes Diz Din coming at you with a review of the Owl House. This is season one, episode two, titled Witches Before Wizards. No, that's a very true statement as ultimately you should always choose witches over wizards. They're just so much cooler half the time. But our episode opens with Luz like realizing oh i'm actually still in that magical world i thought i was dreaming about how about that and she is all too excited to begin her life of witchcraft and wizardry it's all over by disney disney so i can say that i think was it maybe I'll have to double check that. But she decides it's time for her to dress the part. So she gets all dressed up and ready for some witch lessons. Ida, on the other hand, not so much. As the opening plays, and man, that opening is so beautiful. That opening is so gloriously animated. Like that one shot that just keeps going in the beginning, just phenomenal like wow i can't even believe that just dude that opening is amazing and i could watch it on end for hours but in the crux of the actual episode after a thor-like moment when ida summons her magic staff she talks about the fact that normally in this world when a witch is coming up she goes to school and gains her magic staff however since Luz is not going to school she'll have to do things a little bit differently by being a basically an intern for Ada so ultimately Ada introduces Luz to her other job aside from selling human goods which is selling potions such as snake oil Ironic, ain't it? A snake oil salesman in a magic world? Mm. I feel like that says something. Um, and she will be delivering to Bonesboro, the pl main town right next to where Ida lives. She also sends King along because, well, Luz would probably end up getting herself killed or lost or something worse than that if he didn't go along so they end up going into bone burrow and Luz is all about that magical destiny she feels there's got to be something out there calling to her there's got to be a reason why she was able to come into this magical place unfortunately those hopes are quickly dashed as she finds that the boiling isles and this magical world in general isn't as wondrous as she hoped it would be. Nothing about it really screams magical quest. That is until she comes upon this massive palace of a place and runs into this wizard named Adagas. Now, Adagas basically plays into all of Luz's fantasies, while King is nonplussed by all of this. But, you know, when Luz you know, opens up to Adagas over some tea about the fact that her time in the magical world hasn't really been living up to what she thought it would be, Adagas reveals to her that she might be the chosen one who can gain this magical scepter and become the greatest witch of all time. And of course, Luz is immediately on board with all of this. However, once King relays this information to Ed, Ed, Edna, Edna, I swear, she's, she's only got three syllables, three letters in her names, and I just cannot get it down. Edda, Ida, I don't know why I'm struggling with this, but regardless, Ada immediately laughs and loses face about this because it's just like magical destiny, yeah, right, but... She does kind of try to bear Luz's feelings about the fact that it's just like, look, kid, you're new here, you haven't been here that long, so of course you look like a mark. You know, someone's of course going to try to scam you, but magical destinies do not exist. Give it up. However, when the sunlight hits this parchment, it reveals a secret message to the Crystal Scepter, reaffirming Luz's thoughts that... It must be a magical destiny. But once Edda 
Ida, um, I really need to pick a name for her. Once Ida starts to mull things over a little bit, she starts to think that this person, this wizard, uh, something about it doesn't seem quite right. And then she finds that Luz has already escaped into the forest next to Boneborough. She's gone off into the city limits with nothing but a toy sword. And she ventures into this town of cats, and she happens upon this roguish young man named Neverath, who uh, fulfills a lot of uh, pre-teen fantasies, if you know what I mean. And even quotes Metal Gear? Uh, uh, yeah, okay, okay, I'll take it. He's got the eye patch. It checks out. Um, but as Edda comes upon the wizard's abode, she finds it's not as glorious as we previously thought, and she finds multiple copies of that same parchment that Luz has. Meanwhile, as Luz continues to journey with Neverath, they come upon this cat who bestows Luz with this ring after she solves a riddle of what his name is which he was wearing a name tag of. But then Edda and King come upon the town, and it is in ruins, which clues Edda into a few things, that this is a trap in order to get to her, not Luz. So as Luz meets various different allies along the way and gains all these, you know, little ends and stuff from her journey, little accessories. She comes upon the crystal staff, picks it up, and it immediately turns to dust. And uh, she starts to clue in that everything is not what it seems. Meanwhile, Edda starts to explain to King that she knows who this guy is. Adagast is a puppet master and one of her rivals in the potion selling business. And as Adagast reveals himself to lose, he truly reveals himself to, as to what he really is, a monstrosity. Mocking Luz over the fact that she will be the one to lead Etta into this trap. And, you know, Etta comes upon Adagas holding Luz hostage. And he goes for her as, Lou, as Etta demands that he let Luz go. Only for Adagas to, you know, entrance Luz once again into a world of fantasy. Where... People actually will respect her, believe in her. You know, back home she was an outcast. Here she seems to be an outcast. But in her fantasies, she's never alone. But Luz manages to break free of the spell of Adagas, and she frees both Edda and King. However, once Adagas captures King, they disarm themselves only for Luz to kick the toy sword right into Adagast's head, changing him into his miniature form, and Edda eats him. Mmm. I wonder if he tastes like calamari. And with that, Luz does kind of feel a little bit down on herself, that she ended up being so naive as to lead Edda into one of the traps of one of her enemies thinking that maybe it is time for her to grow up and give up on her childish fantasies and dreams. But, you know, Edda wants to show Luz a little something special, and that is the Boiling Isles from on high. And though, yes, they might be a completely godforsaken land up close, there is still beauty here. There is still more than what she might think. It can still be beautiful and magical if she lets it. Although Luz does question, you know, how Edda knew that there wasn't a magical destiny. What made her so sure? How does she know? And Edda lets her know that, look, if you wait around waiting for the right moment for this magical destiny, you'll be dead before anything ever actually happens. So you have to go out and make your own destiny. That's what it's all about. You know, you can't wait for someone to tell you that you have a greater purpose out there. You have to go out there and find it. 
That's only then will you actually start to live. And, you know, Luz actually starts to kind of take this to heart. That maybe this old witch does have a thing or two to teach her, after all. A phenomenal episode with so many ups and downs and all arounds. You know, it wasn't like phenomenally animated, but it did, it was just solid work. You know, a few mistakes here and there, but just good as a whole. I loved the references, especially the, do you think love can bloom on a battlefield? Like, yo, Metal Gear Solid quotes up in this piece, nice. And that, the He-Man sword that Luz had, and the reference to Thor Ragnarok with Edda stumming her owl staff and all that. Just really fun nods here and there that just really, you know, it, it took me off guard over the course of the episode and kind of enhanced my enjoyment a bit. But, man, I gotta tell you, Adagas was disturbing when he first showed up. Like, oof. I felt intimidated, and I'm kind of happy for that, because it was just like, hey, that just goes to show that this series, you know, while it is kitty, it still can be a bit on the gruesome side, and I like the trend of seeing more stuff like that. You know, Infinity Train had moments like that, and, you know, a few other series where it's just like, yeah, it's for kids, but it'll still scare the bugging out of you. Something fierce. If you don't, if you're not keeping up all your guard up. And it's also delivering great messages. I love what Edda had to say at the end here. Because... It goes to show that, well, she isn't quite teaching Luz in the way that she wants to be taught. She's teaching Luz in the way that she needs to be taught. Showing that Etta has years of experience that she can truly share with Luz in the end. And, you know, the, this is a great relationship. And I am more than excited to see how it continues to develop over the course of the series. But please join me for that, if you would, by hitting the subscribe button. And if you want to, hit the bell, hit a like, hit a dislike if you want. I ain't your daddy. And find me on social media by just googling Dudes Disden. I am everywhere. But until next time, I will see you in the next video. Bye bye. <laughs>